Hello my loves. Okay, this is a long one, so buckle up, buttercup. I hope you've had a wonderful Christmas. But after taking, what, three days off, four days off, I, I need to do nails. So, I thought of this last night. I thought, let's do some New Year nails. Let's just go for it. Um, so as always, I'm using my flexi hand for this. And I'm going to be using Glitter Bells Snowdrops White, uh, Carbon Black and Liquid Gold. And also capping in their glass slippers. I just thought, as I'm using the black and the gold I might as well use the whole system and just make it easy on myself so how are you all are you good are we all over our bugs and sniffles and grossness it's just I mean I really want to take my decorations down like I'm done I'm Christmased out <laughs> too much Christmas <laughs> still love my red nails though I'm not getting rid of them Okay, so I've been faffing around getting all my stuff ready. Uh, yeah, I do have black acrylic on the underneath of my hand because I was messing about earlier and I forgot to get it off. Oh dear, so yeah, sorry, I was trying to yawn then, it was very strange. Okay, on this nail I'm going in with Snowdrops White and I'm doing a gold white ombre. Um, are you loving white and gold? Because I am like super loving it. So I'm just literally just pulling that down to the tip and then I'll blend it back towards the cuticle. Just blend in like the top part, not the whole entire thing, not, not kind of squishing it. I'm actually just going to make sure everything's in place there and that, hello Milo, and then my dog always comes to join me. Then I'm going to let that nail set before I add the gold. So it's really good coverage on the snowdrops white. I'm then going to do a full nail of carbon black. Now I'm going to do kind of like a thin layer first and then go over with a big bead. So up until right now, I've never worked with black acrylic. Up until what you're seeing right now because I've been so afraid of it. I don't know why. I just... Because when I worked with it, actually, it's really fun to work with. Um, this one's incredibly pigmented. It's really good and fun to marble with. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. But I just had this fear. So I'm literally just laying a thin layer down, but full coverage. Because um, it's quite easy to get a good coverage with this. And this is actually going to be like a netting design. My husband said to me it, it reminded him of koi carp. And he was like, oh, koi nail, that's so cool. I'm like, what? <laughs> that wasn't what I was going for, but I'll take it. <laughs> As you can see, my thumb is already like battered from being filed. It's not fair. Once I've got this bead down, I'm going to go in with a nice big wet bead and lay that down on top because I need the entire surface to kind of be setting at the same time in order to press the netting into it successfully. And it was a pickle. I need a finger rest, so I should have had the nail resting on a finger rest. It would have made it a lot easier. And the black acrylic being so incredibly pigmented is also incredibly sticky. So it worked in the end anyway, but it was just a faff. That's all. Hi to all my new subscribers. Hello my loves, all right? You will we'll learn very quickly that I am kind of strange and I like it that way. <laughs> so I've dipped the netting into clear acrylic and I'm pushing it in. This is so fiddly, especially when you've got a practice hand that you're doing it on because it doesn't push against you at all. So I really should have had a finger rest of some sort, but I did get there in the end and it was okay, even though it looks like a complete F up, you know what I'm saying. I, I did then leave it to set for maybe sort of like three minutes or so before going in and kind of like um, pulling it off. But there was a, a brief sort of panic where I thought I'd just ripped the whole lot off. I was like, oh my God, but it was all right. <laughs> See there, I literally shit a brick. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> 
<laughs> but it was alright, it was fine. I'm like, just going to touch it and try and smoosh it back in place. It'll all be okay. Take deep breaths. <laughs> it was fine. So then I'm going in with really wet beads of the Snowdrops White and the Liquid Gold and kind of... In my head, I was like, oh, this is like a super cool take on the animal prints that are going around at the moment. Because I was, you know, I've got, when I first started doing nails, actually, maybe I should recreate it. This is like five years ago. I did a rainbow leopard print and it was super popular. And all, at one point, every client was like, can I have that rainbow leopard print that someone, that you did on such and such a, and, um, I was thinking of it the other day, recreating it, and then I was like, oh, it's just the same though. I want to do something different with that kind of look, that animalistic, printy kind of look. And this actually turned out like that, so it's pretty cool. Like, it reminded me of animal print, but non specific. It clearly reminded my husband of a koi cup. I'm trying to be flattered by that comment. <laughs> So I'm just putting really wet beads in and just working it down. You just want it to go in the gaps, it doesn't matter, it's going to look horrendous, don't worry, it's fine. And then I'm just going to put that nail to the side and let it all dry down and set nicely. So we're going back to the white nail now and I'm going to place a bead of gold down at the cuticle. There's something really satisfying about working with like golds and silvers and stuff, like the metallic-y, they're just so quirky to work with. And I'm blending that down. It was a bit of a bugger to feather down, it was a bit of a faff, but it's okay. Just swipe a bit off, look, if it seems like it's not going your way. And I put some glitter through it anyway, so it didn't... <sighs> didn't really matter. Sorry, I keep yawning. I'm so tired from Christmas. I'm so, so tired. I don't know about anyone else, but I literally just feel like I could sleep for a week. Again, putting a little wet bead down and blending it in, and then just swiping off if there's too much. But I'm not stressing overly because I'm going to go in with this beautiful glitter from Smiley's Glitter Store. They're just so pigmented that sometimes they spread really, really, really well and it makes it a little bit hard to, to get that fade. But at the same time, it's good because it does spread. So, yeah, it's not necessarily a bad thing. So I'm just going in with a bead of clear and I'm picking up some raw glitter. This is called Glitzy Gold. It's a holographic gold from Smiley's Glitter Store and it matched perfectly and it's just stunning. It's really pretty. And it's actually the only bit of raw glitter in this set I know right like since when have I only done that but I think the colors kind of spoke for themselves I feel like I don't even know myself <laughs> I need to get my hands on some gel paints and some thin brushes that are a little bit longer than the one I've got so I'm thinking of looking at nail Camille. But if you can give me any recommendations, then please do in the comments because I want some nice gel paints and a nice brush. I've got a super long brush, which is cheap, and I've got a stumpy, stumpy thin brush, but I can't do much with it because it's stumpy. You know my Illumina Nails Dementor brush, I think it's too short. So yeah. Right, this nail is the colour block, and I should have done this first, but I was, I think I was on the phone to my mum whilst I was doing this. So I've put down a bead of Snow White and I'm creating a point there. So I'm taking it up to the cuticle and then bring it into a point. I'm just laying another bead down because we know it's going to be filed loads. And really, I've tried doing colour blocks with, with um, blades and stuff like that. I just prefer to use my brush. It's just, I'm more comfortable with it. I feel like I've got more control. I just, I seem to mess it up when I do it any other way. So. I just use my brush to neaten it up as much as possible and then I'll let it set before I file it in. So we move on to the next nail and this nail is going to be a marble. So I'm laying down uh, snowdrops white, carbon black and liquid gold and then I'm grabbing my Glitter Planet size 5 brush and just swirling them together. 
and it was really pretty. I really liked it. So this set has got a lot going on. I mean, if you've got a client coming in saying, I want that one, you charge just that, you charge for it, you know, because it's a lot of work. Again, just swirling them together. The black really kind of stands out. I love it so much. I love it so much. I was getting a bit brave now. It's like running down the nail. <laughs> it's okay because I can go back and add little bits, which I do actually. I go back and add a little bit of gold up there and then blend it down. And don't worry if you're doing a marble nail and it's lumpy bumpy because you cap it anyway. So don't worry. It's it's going to be lumpy bumpy because you're kind of carving into it, aren't you? So don't panic. And also what I like to do with the black, I'll show you in a second actually. I'm just going to add a tiny bit. There. I do like these 3D brushes because the, the tip's so tiny, you can pick up the smallest little bead. So I go in with a tiny bit of black and I draw, you know like a little vein when you have like marble work surfaces or anything, just a couple of little veiny parts. I think it just sort of added to the design a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna cap these two nails before I um, file in any of the others because there's obviously, it's gonna cause a lot of dust. So I've sped this up, just capping it in. Nice wet bead, feather it back and then take it down the nail. Oh, the brush I'm using is my Glitter Fairy brush. I'm back on that one again, you know. She's my fave at the moment. It's size 10 and it's round, it's got a nice pointy tip. I find cuticle work better with my Glitter Planet brush, but I just enjoy this one. Oh, I'm so sorry, I'm yawning again. Oh my god. So annoying. I'm annoying myself. So let me know if you've got anything planned for New Year. I'm doing nothing. New Year's Eve. Just spend it with the children. We have to keep it quiet because um, our youngest son and oldest son are both special needs. So we just keep things calm here and the girls, our teenage girls, they'll, they'll either stay with us or um, I think one of them's having a sleepover at their friend's house. Yes, so we'll probably go to bed nice and early because it's my father's 78th birthday on New Year's Day. So we're going to be taking them out and going for dinner and stuff. So we're keeping it chilled. Gone are the days of partying for me. I'll have a cup of tea and a biscuit instead. That is actually the truth. I will have a cup of tea and a biscuit instead. <laughs> and then we're capping the marble nail. Nice and wet. A bit too wet really. It was a sloppy mess. It's because I keep changing systems. Because I've been working with diamond nail supplies. And then obviously for this set I switched it up to glitter bells. And I'm just, my ratio's off. So it's a bit bit haphazard and a bit messy but sorry about that. I'm only human. I'm only human after all. And I'm constantly turning my finger to the side to have a look at that to, to make sure I've not got too many dips or anything like that. So we're filing in that colour block. Use the sharp edge of the file but it right up against that edge. You want a nice ledge to push your next colour up against. And then brush all that dust off because you don't want that in the way. And then going in with carbon black. I'm trying to work drier, but my, like I said, my ratio is a bit off. Um, so I wasn't particularly controlled, but it turned out really nice, so I'm happy. I have an idea which if you find this type of colour block difficult like lining it up because that was my problem that's why I've never done one like this I have an idea 
as to how I could possibly help. So I'm going to test it out and if it works I will post a video on it. So I'm adding enough beads to cover the area I want and just going slightly over that white there because I want to make sure it really is up to that line and there's no little gaps. And then we just blend the two back together. And you want to build it up to the same height as well because we're going to be doing a lot of filing to reveal the design at the end so you need the thickness there to file back. So while that's setting I've put it to the side and I'm going to file in as my husband says the koi carp nail. I really love this nail. It might be my favourite. I really really like it. So the e-file I'm using is from Femme Fatale Nails and the bit I'm using is my coarse safety bit from Glitter Planet UK. I think it's like four times coarse or extra coarse, something like that. And then I'm just going to go and hand file just to tidy it up and then I will wipe over it with a bit of monomer. I'll brush the dust away, wipe over it with a bit of monomer and cap it in clear. Obviously because the majority of the colours there are design. I love this, I love it so much. I didn't even know if I'd like it, but I really love it. I was like, oh, pretty look when you just wipe over it. It's so pretty. So we'll cap that in clear. Again, I, I always you'll see me turn the turn the hand slightly to the side. I'm checking for any dips in the nail or inconsistencies that I can rectify by placing an extra bead down. So then we're back to the colour block again and we're filing in. Same principle as before, but that file right up against that, push against the acrylic, knock down on the nail. And you'll see the sharpness just get filed in and it's it's really satisfying to watch actually. I like it. Brush off the dust again. And I know it looks like a complete mess right now, but don't worry. So we're going in with the liquid gold. These are a little bit harder to work with on the colour block. They're quite sticky and messy, but to be honest, you just keep your brush wet when you're cleaning it away. It w as soon as it starts to um, set up a little bit, it's kind of easier to move around. But then again, you could probably work drier with it. It's just, I'm still working a bit wet. My ratio is still a bit skew with. So, love that word, skew with. But you still need to make sure you build that wall high enough. Because when you file it, you'll find that you do take off quite a lot of product with the e-file and you don't want to end up with kind of bald spots there. It will really, it, all that hard work will go to waste. And do keep an eye on your monomer as well. If necessary, use a separate monomer for the liquid gold and stuff because they really do um, get on your brush and get everywhere. Just they get everywhere. So it's probably best to use a separate monomer. So again, once that's set, we file it in. Same principle. And then once we've filed in, we remove the dust and go in with the next colour. Again, worked too wet, so I had to like <laughs> splodge it around. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do, people. <laughs> it was alright though, it was alright. In fact, I, I, my brush caught this as I was moving my brush and it happened to be a very good mistake because it, it let me reshape it because I really caught it with the side of the brush and it kind of splatted it. So I was able to quickly reshape it while it was setting up um, and it worked out really nice. So it was a happy accident. Be 
think it's like any time now you'll just see it go splat. I think, I'm sure it is. Maybe in a minute. I'm like waiting for it now because I know it happened. I've seen it. I know it. I know it's coming. Maybe now. Oh my god, I'm annoying myself waiting for it now. There it is. See that right there? So I was like, quick, get in. Quick, quick, fix it. Quick, 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 quick. And actually, applying that pressure and moving that bead around made it better. <laughs> so it saved me. And then we're on to the last one. So obviously I've let it set and then I've filed it in. It's just, you've seen it a couple of times, so I didn't think I needed to repeat that step in front of you again. And then I'm just filling the gap that's left now. I don't know what my, if this was a client's hand, I don't know what they would be thinking at this particular moment in time. Probably let me out right now. This woman thinks she can do nails. She is insane. <laughs> Okay, we're all set, so we're gonna file off now. Same e-file and drill bit as before. Drill bit. <laughs> now we get to see the reveal. I love this part, super satisfying. So I'm basically getting rid of the bulk here. I will go in with a hand file and refine it. But look at that, I love it. I was really pleased with this. Because it is time consuming and it is a fiddly. And I've always wanted to do one in this particular style but never been able to crack it. So it was nice to, to finally do it. And then once all the nails are filed and shaped, I'll wipe over them quickly with acetone after removing the dust. And we're going in and capping this one. Oh yeah, before I wipe it with acetone, I'm gonna cap this one. I'm so tired, I forgot what I was doing because this is really not a strength design at all. It's using design powder mainly, so we need to cap it in clear. And then, once that's set, I'll file the nails in, <laughs> remove the dust, wipe them with acetone, and then we will be on to the top coat and the final reveal video. Which I'm excited about. If you are still here, you've done well, thank you. I'm sorry it's a long one, but it is quite a detailed set, and I didn't want to kind of leave any steps out. So here we're going in with, I can't remember what top coat I used. I think it was Diamond Nail Supplies top coat. Here we are, this is like, ah, when these ones get top coated. I just love it, love watching it come to life with all the color. This one especially just really comes to life the minute the top coat hits it. I really get it. Just oh, I just think it's just nail porn, isn't it? <laughs> it's nail porn, honey. And then our cute little pinky. If I was doing this full set, the thumb would be the same as the pinky, for sure. 
and there we are i hope you've enjoyed this and i will see you in my next video tally bye